your bond has a condition of no contact with the alleged victim at all in the in the felony battery charge, the battery on person over 65 case. I believe that person's your father. No contact no, with him at all. You cannot. No, it's not your father. No, 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 no. This is a neighbor who claimed that I hit him after I filed charges against him for sexual. You're saying he resolved this case in Jackson County? Correct. Yes, sir. So they coordinated yes. together and went ahead and resolved it? Correct. Some paperwork was done incorrectly somehow. Who was your attorney in Jackson County that handled all this? Uh, they, they've, done a global, they've done a global resolution here at Jackson County. And uh, my, question, my question is, who was your attorney? Who was your attorney here? And they, they, she done that, and it canceled all the other stuff out. And then they Mr. Restarted Hunter, he's asking you specific questions, and you're going into rants that has nothing to do with the question he asked. So Mr. Hunter, listen. today in Judge Wade Mercer's courtroom, we have two defendants who, despite only being here on their first appearances, seem eager to share more than what is required. Our first defendant arrives with a tale to tell, alleging that the charges against him stem from an incident with an elderly gentleman. However, he insists that there is more to the story, boldly asserting that whatever transpired was warranted and justified. Will Judge Mercer lend an ear to his claims and uncover the truth behind the altercation? And in our second case, the defendant arrives under the belief that his legal matters have already been resolved through a global resolution with the previous prosecutor. Confident in his stance, he maintains that he should not be in jail for these charges. Will Judge Mercer validate his assertions and grant him the release he seeks? Stay tuned to find out. Mr. Hockaday, good morning. Mr. Hockaday, you're here because you've been accused of, good morning, one count of aggravated battery on a person 65 years of age or older, and one count of possession of controlled substance. Mr. Hockaday, there is probable cause uh, for both those charges. Those are two different cases. And Mr. Hockaday, I'm going to address your bond. Before I do so, I want to see if uh, the attorney is having additional information. Uh, Ms. Bremer, anything on behalf of the state? Your Honor, the state requests a reasonable bond, no contact with the victim, and uh, no possession or consumption of an illegal substance without a prescription. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel? No, Your Honor. I know someone came in late. Is anyone here on behalf of Mr. Hockaday on, on that case? No? Okay. Mr. Hockaday, let me see if this is – battery on a person over 65 is a felony. So let me see if they've got you charged with aggravated battery or just – they've got you charged with battery on a person over 65 based upon the statute. That's a third-degree felony, whereas aggravated battery would be a second-degree felony. But you have a very long history, Mr. Hockaday, very long I'm going to set your bond at $7,500 on that charge as well as $7,500 on the other charge. Mr. Hockaday, your total bond is $15,000 cash or surety. Your bond has a condition of no contact with alleged victim at all in the, in the felony battery charge, the battery on person over 65 case. I believe that person's your father. No contact no, with him at all. You cannot. No, it's not your father? No, 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 no. This is a neighbor who claimed that I hit him after I filed charges against him for on my wife and I filed charges on this man I was living with him and he's the reason why I got trespassed and brought to the Jackson County Jail for the very first time to begin with so this is after I did that it was in retaliation he was already in the hospital for falling and he had been gone for over 12 days from his house and sent the deputies to his house and said that I was trespassed that I had been living there for three months I filed charges on him for stealing my bank card and my mail and for all wife and the, the, red, the deputy who took the report was deputy register for the Jackson County Jail, Jackson County Sheriff's Department, excuse me. This is, I, I have not been to that area since I came out of jail. I've been living with somebody else. Okay. Yeah, it, I was wrong. It says that. Walter K. Johnson. I guarantee you. Yeah, that's, that, that's the alleged victim. So that's the person you can have no contact with. Mr. Mr. Johnson is the person you can have no contact with. And it's, it's a little confusing, but it doesn't say son. It says that you were residing with them. Um, so no contact with that person if you post bond and no drugs or alcohol unless you've got a valid prescription for the substance. Uh, but you will get to use the phone in a few minutes, sir, to try to post the bond. Do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. Right, have a good day, sir. Thank you. Yes, and, um, I, you know, Calhoun County just never has loaded it, has not took off their we had their uh, warrant for him, but he's pled to this case. You're saying he resolved this case in Jackson County? Correct. Yes, sir. So they coordinated yes. together and went ahead and resolved it? Correct. Some paperwork was done incorrectly somehow. 
Okay. I'm trying to pull up the uh, Calhoun County case and see if there's a disposition in that case. Who was your attorney in Jackson County that handled all this? Uh, they, they've, done a global, they've done a global resolution here at Jackson County. And, uh, my, question, my question is, who was your attorney? Who was your attorney here that had uh, all John, of this? John Young Roberts, sir. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Hang on just a second. Give me a second to read it. There's a VOP plea form where you were unsuccessfully terminated on your Calhoun County case signed by Judge Garcia on February 6th. Does that sound right, Mr. Hunter? They canceled everything out on that date. From the, I was three months from finishing probation, and they, they, she'd done that, and it canceled all the other stuff out. And then they Mr. Restarted Hunter, he's testing. asking you specific questions, and you're going into rants that has nothing to do with the question he asked. So Mr. Hunter, listen I, to it. I think I, I think you're right. I just want to know, you resolved it on February 6th, and it looks like you resolved Jackson and Calhoun. Is that right? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm okay. sorry. I was trying right. to help. It's okay. It's okay. Wait just a second. So it looks like, Mr. McDaniel, when that happened, there's no – someone never filed with the clerk's office in Calhoun. The disposition was filed, but I don't see where anything was ever filed that the warrant was served. But it's obviously over with. Ms. Bremer, I'm inclined to release – Mr. Hunter with instructions to report to the probation officer and, and grow from there. But I want to know what the state's position is before I make a decision. The, the state has no objection, Your Honor. Mr. Hunter, I want to direct that you be released. It's my, it appears to me that Mr. McDaniel is absolutely correct that you've already resolved this. I'm going to All instruct right. you to report to your – who was your probation officer? Uh, Miss Mel is her name. That's Where is that? Jackson or Calhoun? Jackson or Calhoun? Yes, sir. They're in Jackson, but handled for both. Okay. You need to report to – him or her today and let uh, them yes, follow sir. up because because someone needs to make sure they get this all cleared uh, yes, but sir. i'm going to show this warrant served i'm going to release you i'm not going to give you a court thank date because it looks to me like the case is over yes. but you need to report thank your you probation so officer today to follow up with it okay yes sir have a good day thank god, thank god. miss bremer if you would email the uh the prosecutor in calhoun county and let him or her know what i've done and why yes, i'd appreciate it we have Austin, I believe it's pronounced Iller, perhaps. Iller. Iller. Mr. Iller, good morning. Iler. Mr. Iller, you're here. Good morning, sir. You're here because you've been accused of one charge of possession of more than 20 grams of marijuana. I have read the complaint. There is probable cause. Mr. Iller, it looks to me like you have no prior criminal history, at least in Florida. No, have you ever been charged with a crime? Any? Uh, let me ask you a no, question. Just wait. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.